Good morning, everyone. Next talk is by Antriksh. Antriksh, the stage is yours. Um, thanks, um, Vipul. Um, so, good afternoon, my fellow Pythonistas. And I'm assuming everyone can hear me. Um, so, good afternoon, my fellow Pythonistas. Welcome to my presentation on revolutionizing the web with Python. Bryson. So, the agenda for this talk includes an introduction to Bryson, an example of Bryson in the browser, and of course, Bryson under the hood. And lastly, comparing and contrasting JavaScript and Bryson. And then we can have a small Q&A session if you guys have questions. So who am I? I'm a passionate tech enthusiast who loves software and enjoys learning new technologies. I'm a professional full stack Django developer with over two years of um, experience in Python. So let's take a look at an introduction to Bryson. So first of all, what is Bryson? So Bryson is this JavaScript library. And yes, it's a JavaScript library, right? It's a JavaScript library which um, transcompiles your Python source code, which you write, right? And it is <coughs> this implementation of Python 3 in the browser. Now, most of you would have questions that how do you actually write this code? Where do you write this code? And how do you transcompile it? Like, is there a CLI tool? Or is it built in the browser? Well, I'm going to answer all that questions um, later in the presentation. So for now, it is this JavaScript library, which runs Python, allows you to write Python code and transcompile it and run it in the browser. So why Bryson? You know, why don't you just use JavaScript? Well, Bryson, because first of all, you have access to Python and its friendly syntax. And who doesn't love Python, right? And of course, to use Python for numerical computations, right? And then, of course, for uh, many JavaScript problems can be avoided, like global variables, function scopes. I mean, who likes var keyword? Like you've got let keyword, const keyword, var keyword. What's the difference between all of them? And the most annoying thing in JavaScript is the difference between triple equals and double equals. I mean, what does it mean, right? If you're writing an if statement, it's just impossible to work with triple equals and double equals. And I know many JavaScript developers out there agree with me. So let's take a look at some previous attempts at Python in the browser, right? For those of you who are thinking, well, maybe Bryson is the only one. No, there are many more, but I'm just highlighting four of them here. So the first on our list is Pyodide by Mozilla. So Pyodide is, I think, the best known um, attempt out of these four because it was an experimental project by Mozilla to create a full data science stack in the browser. Yes, I repeat, in the browser, full data science stack for Python. And of course, um, then there was Sculpt, right, which is a JavaScript implementation of Python 2 in the browser. And yeah, Python 2. Eh, no one likes that. And then there was PyPy.js, which is basically a JavaScript library which runs PyPy source code. For those of you who don't know what PyPy is, it's this Python implementation aimed at making Python faster. So it's basically Python, but much faster. And then there's Transcript, which is a CLI tool, which allows you to run and compile Python to JavaScript. Now, this is a graph of um, uh, of an insight into Python in the browser, right? It shows you all the different um, things we talked about here, right? Let me get the pointer. So all these which we talked here. So this graph shows you basically all those based on their compile time and how they work. So the first thing which comes to mind is this is one group. This is another group. Why is Bryson alone? Well, this alone, this uniquely less unique uniqueness in Bryson is what makes it, I think, the most successful Python in the attempt at Python in the browser. Yeah. So as you can see, um, these are ahead of time. This uh, compiles on page load and this compiles after page load. So Bryson, we're going to see how this on page load compilation time affects Bryson and its effectiveness in Python in the browser. But for now, um, 
it does not mean right this graph shows you different compile times and different um, um, python in the browsers attempts at python in the browser but this this does not mean that sculpt or pypydrojs or pyodide were failures no this shows you that pyodide was um this shows you that these are not that effective in the browser but in a general case scenario bryson is um i'd say i my preference but bryson would be my preference at an attempt at python in the browser but if you of course want to use something for data science then pyodide would be your go to if you want to run py py, py then pypy or js would be your go to so this does not mean all these attempts at um python in the browser do not mean that um uh, transcript uh, sculpt all these were failures no they just mean that they are useful in some other scenarios right so let's talk more on bryson right let's get back to bryson so to get started with bryson you can use a cdn right or you can install it on your local machine using npm or pip but for the purposes of this talk i am going to use the cdn for those of you who want to use npm or pip you can refer to the bryson documentation the bryson official website is bryson.info so let's take a look at an example of bryson in the browser now this i think is the most awaited um this is the most awaited most awaited thing of the talk so here as you can see i have the small website web application small web thingy <laughs> so as you can see i've got these buttons i've got this save jokes right so what this does is that this is the random programming jokes generator so i can click on this button and it's going to generate a joke for me yeah so it did so as you can see it takes some time in the first time and it generated that joke for me i can save that joke now it does not save it and show you in real time but i can reload my jokes to see it's still there right it's the same thing why did the javascript heap close shop it ran out of memory i don't get it but it's still the same thing so now i can generate another joke and you'll see this nice loading effect right you see that in for those of you who know what ajax is you see that in asynchronous javascript and xml applications ajax applications for those of you who don't know there's no necessary uh, you don't need to necessarily know it right but it's good so um again you know i cannot save you know if i don't want i can't i i can also not save this joke and generate another joke so this is basically doing something called as ajax right which i told you about so i like to call it abax because this is asynchronous bryson and xml right because all this is bryson code and to show you what i actually mean by that i can go to elements as you can see i've got a bunch of code here like these are this is html code but here in body if you'll see there's this on load is equal to bryson so the first thing that's going to catch your attention is what is this on load is equal to bryson right so this is the bryson function right which we're going to take a look at what does this mean right what does this represent what does this actually allow you to do we're going to take a look at that later but for now what you need to really see is this right now now i know what you're thinking there's a script tag and first of all that script tag has a type of text slash python second of all this code is not javascript because what goes inside a script tag is javascript i know that but since i'm using bryson i need to specify type of text slash python and i can write and i can then write this javascript code that's, it's that simple i can create a script tag write type is equal to text slash python and write in all my code so you can see it's python code it's pure python i've got the python import statement python def keyword functions right now i know some of you would be amazed some of you will be like okay this is cool so as you can see i've got cdn so as i told you in the bryson introduction slide that this um how you actually write by bryson code is by writing it in a normal code editor as you would do um and then you copy the cdn links right you can get this from the bryson info uh, bryson website as i told you bryson.info and from there you can copy and paste these cdns right and what you can do is specify this onload function of bryson and we're going to see its significance in our code 
and then you can write your normal HTML and go ahead and make a script tag with the type of text slash Python, right? And write in your Python code. So we're gonna take a look at how do we write this code? What does this code mean? What are the Python functions? What is this br browser module, right? Um, and then of course we've got this file here, local storage .bri. I know many of you are thinking, what does this file is? What this file is? What is this file? What is this .bri extension? Well, some of you may have known, uh, may have got the answer. .bri represents Bryson, and on the Bryson um, info website, it says that the official Bryson uh, extension is .bri, right? So for those of you who had that question, it's a .bri file, and I can simply Say script again. Type text slash Python and make source local storage dot bry. And you know I can I can actually convert this to a JS file. You know I can just do that. It's that simple. It will still work. I I already tried that. It worked right. Um, but let's come back here. Now another thing I want to show you is quickly is this. You might think that. Okay, this this saved, you know, this saved my joke. But what if I'll refresh my website, you know, or close my window, close my tab? What will happen then? Well, this is your answer. It will still save your jokes. How does that happen? Well, some of you would know the answer, some of you won't. For those of you who know this, yes, we are using local storage, right? Those of you who don't, we are using local storage. So if you're on a chromium based browser go ahead open your dev tools you know go ahead and go to any website um, open your dev tools and then go to application tab you know application it would be somewhere here and then you'll see something like this page click on this drop down get this and you'll see this beautiful key value pairs table kind of thing right so this is the local storage local storage is simply um, your in browser storage, which allows you to save some key information in your browser, right? And this allows you to um, save some important information which you'd want to reference in your websites. So I'm using local storage, and local storage saves those information in key value pairs, right? So what I'm doing here is saving it in the key of ID and value of the joke, right? And then I'm referencing it over here. We're going to look at how do we do how we work with local storage right but for now you just need to know we use local storage here i can delete an item also i just press the delete key for those of you who were wondering what did i do reload that boom gone it's that simple now i can also do something like why did the python keep close shop i don't understand that let's reload that boom it's python now so this basically local storage, right? It's some local storage stuff. Um, I, I am not going to go too deep into local storage, but um, most of you may have made the connection between local storage and dictionaries. And yes, they have a connection. We're going to look at that connection and look at the, look at its significance in Bryson. But for now, let's go back to our slides. Let's go back to the code that we are going to write, right? right? So let's take a look at the code we're gonna write woohoo so selecting elements now for those of you who know what the dom is great for those of you who don't document object model or dom you guys can research it dom is simply just um this um your html document right that in um in a nutshell is the, your document object model right all of your the tree Right, the HTML tree you have that is the document object model and there are there's a lot of things that comes under this concept of DOM so you can research it but um, let's take a look at some DOM operations we can do with Bryson so the first one is of course um, selecting elements for those of you who work with JavaScript or in the client side you know that selecting elements is the most basic DOM operation so I've got two code snapshots here right this one right here uh, so this one right here is uh, the bryson um the bryson code and this one is how you would do the same thing but in javascript right because i'm just comparing and contrasting javascript right here so i run this python and import statement you know it's very pythonic 
you all know this code then i say data is equal to document in square brackets plus the id of the element right id of the element refers to the html element you want to select the id attribute of that html element right and then this code here the javascript part is basically how you would do the same thing in javascript using the get element by id function right so this is essentially how you would select an element let's move on and talk about some more selectors because it would be a hassle if you can only select an element by the id because what if you want to select all the elements with a tag of form right then you'd have to give each form an id and in large scale web applications it would be very tough so um we can use a select function which again from browser import document and we can just say document dot select save it in a variable we just selected an element so you can pass in any selector you want like dot foo hashtag container a square brackets title right pass in any selector um css selector jquery selector normal html selectors which you have you know adding and removing classes now this is um a very um useful um useful dom operation adding and removing classes so what we can do here is this is how you do add, how you would add and remove classes in javascript and for those of you who know javascript this is how you would do that now can you guess how you could do this uh the same thing in bryson now for those of you who don't know just take a guess Com put it uh in the chat because i can't read the chat but go ahead put it right um and this is how you do it in bryson it's exactly the same there's no difference you know there's no difference when i got to know about this i was not shocked but i was intrigued at how um how excellent um bryson is because it's exactly the same and in fact i just copied this code snapshot and just mirrored it and put it down here you know i didn't have to do much work and it's exactly the same so you know um, yeah it's exactly the same so we have an element and then we have a class list and then we can say add remove so add and remove functions um they are a part of the class list which is basically just um a list of all the classes on this element and remember this element is um this right this data this when we selected this um element right this element refers to that and then we can just say dot class list dot add and the class name which we want to add and the class name we want to remove right then um we can move on to creating and appending dom elements this is another very important dom operation which you would do right so again we want to run our handy import statement from browser import html right and then we can just say new development or whatever you want to name the variable is equal to html which is the we what we have imported right now we can say dot div and note here note notice this div right this function div first of all the first thing to note here is that the tag we want is in capitals the second thing is that the tag we want to create the element we want to create is being referenced as a function and yes we have to reference it as a function and then we have to pass in the um attributes we want in that element as arguments right so if you want um this new div element which i want if i want to pass in a class of new div so i can just pass an argument of new div and say class is equal to new div right i can do the same with id pass in id is equal to unique new div and appending an element is super simple html dot li i just create an element because i need two elements or two participants in appending an element so i use this less than equal to sign and i put my new div element so this less than equal to sign just means that we are adding content because many people get confused what this actually about what this actually means because you know i myself have seen have have seen many google groups many telegram groups and um, many people discussing about what 
does this less than equal to sign really mean right and really it's 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 a hassle people are like why why do they use this thing well they use this and um we can't negotiate we just have to use this so we just say less than equal to and our element which we just created boom we appended the element next the html module tags this is the html module right so these are the html4 ah uh, the html4 module tags right you can see a tag and you don't need to remember all of them right these are the normal tags which you would have in an html document most of these you won't even use like q or s or samp i haven't even heard of them so that's that you can find these on the uh, on the bryson documentation bryson.info and the html module tags for html5 these are the html5 tags there are also html5.1 tags and if anyone is asking this question that is this talk sponsored no it's not i'm just making this talk because i want to it's not sponsored so adding and deleting items from local storage now this is what we talked about now here i'm going to first of all point out the significance between local storage and dictionary and how that actually you know um, works with brighton and secondly i'm also going to talk about the importance of local storage right local storage is really important because you know if you're on facebook or any website and there's dark and light mode right or different themes you know you click on that moon button and it becomes dark right that <clears throat> that works because of local storage right when you go to your facebook account you know try this out if you haven't already go to your facebook account click on your dark mode or light mode then go to your dev tools check it out in local storage boom it would be there right that theme there would be like a key of theme and then a value of dark or light right do this then you'll understand how local storage is used in what context it is used in what projects it, it, it's used so um again we want to uh, run our handy import statement from browser.local underscore storage import storage then we can just storage and in square brackets pass the item key key foo right the item key which is foo here and give it a value of bar for those of you who know how dictionary dictionaries work you know that passing in that this item right this key um our dictionary is going to check our storage and storage is basically our local storage and it's the dictionary so you can see how it connects how easy it is for working with local storage so this is the relation i was pointing out to the <clears throat> helpfulness and the ease of working with local storage so storage um square brackets foo is equal to bar so for those of you who know how dictionaries work you know that um is going to check if there is an item if there is a key by the name of foo and if it's not it's going to create and give it this value of bar and then we can just use the del keyword and say storage square brackets foo it's that simple we just learned how to add and delete items from local storage you literally created half of what i did in my in my random programming jokes generator right it's that simple now an, an, another alternative for people who don't want to use this super easy method somehow no problem brighton has got you covered again from browser.local_storage just run that import statement and then storage.set item set items a function it takes in two arguments foo and bar and it says okay set item foo bar foo here is the key bar is the value and it sets that item creates that item and deleting that item foo from storage is super simple storage dot remove item foo now foo again is the key here and boom that's it you remove the item so that's that um so let's move on to next to the next part of this presentation bryson under the hood so this is probably not the most compulsory part right the most important part but um but this is um, i think vital to understand because how bryson works right many people would have this question 
um, of such a tech for such a technology. So it's quite simple. Um, there's this transpiler or this transcompiler called py2js.js, which is a JavaScript library which converts Python to JavaScript, right? And Python uses this transpiler to actually transpile the Python code we write. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now it's now to outline to sum everything up in a nutshell. Bryson works in three steps, right? And I'm not gonna end my presentation here. I'm going to explain um, these steps. But the first step is the starter function Bryson. So we, oops, <laughs> we looked at that <clears throat> Bryson function here. So this is compulsory. This is like compulsory so as you can see as resource and its dependent resources have finished loading right this thing so this basically means when your page loads when everything is loaded then we need to run the bryson function right and what does this bryson function do it it looks at everything in this html page it looks if everything in this html page has a script tag in the script tag it checks if it has a type and then it checks if the type is text slash Python, right? If the type we is, we have four minutes huh? remaining. Oh, okay. So it just checks that text slash Python. Great. This is the Python source code, right? We just looked at this code. Great. Now let's move on. Then we've got, uh, then it reads the Python source code inside that um, script tag. And then it runs an eval function, which executes the JavaScript. Now, <clears throat> I've written in parentheses avoids memory leaks on some browsers. Yes, it does. So when it executes the JavaScript on page load, now I was talking about some benefits. So I meant avoiding memory leaks on some browsers. So this is vital because um, a memory leak is basically when you don't collect all the uh, unused variables, which are now garbage, right? All the unused uh, variables and they just take all that memory. They just soak it all in and because of that there's there are memory leaks B browsers can experience memory leaks so let's continue so let's talk about this second step in detail right <clears throat> so first of all there's this main script py2js.js which is the which basically um has this py2js function which translates your source code and then there's this function um which calls the tokenizer. This function tokenize is inside the py2js function. And what this tokenize function does is that it tokenizes everything. So for those of you who don't know what a token is, a token is the most basic representation of a source code. So it can be something like an identifier, a keyword, a plus, an equal to sign, anything. Now, this tokenizer builds a tree, an abstract syntax tree. An abstract syntax tree or AST is just um, a syntactic representation of the source code, a, a tree representation of the source code, sorry. So this tree is made of instances of the class node. Forget about this, this little dollar sign here. It's just, it has different nodes, right? And um, each instance of node is created for each statement. This basically means that each statement we have here of code Right, each node is built for each statement. That's what it means. And for each statement or for each node in this case is a context, right? And then translation to JavaScript. Now this is basically this part, but in a bit more explanatory manner. So two minutes. Okay. It's basically the same thing. A tokenizer reads the tokens in the source code. It passes them to the abstract syntax tree for the code. And then based on the code, it raises the syntax error or an indentation error. And yes, you do get those errors. And then the tree is modified based on your line number and script name. And then, you know, additional nodes are added based on that. Um, and then the transform tree supports a method 2JS, which returns the JavaScript code. And I'm not going to go into the comparison of JavaScript and Bryson. Like, I was talking about the code here. You know, I had the code here. But let's just uh, talk about some features of Bryson and limitations. So Bryson has an excellent DOM API. We looked at the DOM API. It has support for core Python packages and modules. For those of you who don't know, uh, who don't know here, we also <coughs> imported JSON here. 
and it also has support for javascript libraries like jquery and vue js and phaser js and 3d and etc you know you can go to the python documentation it compiles the python code right there in the browser as soon as the body loads which executes javascript and it increases its, its efficiency and of course it is still a developing library no one knows what can happen to it right no one knows what the output will be what it will result in in a few years and the main limitation which i feel the only limitation for brighton is that um brighton is very very slow right it has some performance issues but that those performance issues are covered by the fact that um it uh, executes javascript right there in the browser and it increases its efficiency right so that in a nutshell is all about brighton right um, there are many limitations but javascript is a much better language uh, is a is a much better technology than brighton which i can still say because javascript has a lot of support a ton of support and it has a lot of libraries which basically just increases uh, over overlooks brighton and it's not that brighton is bad it's just that javascript has set a really high bar for the client side for client side scripting but brighton is excellent for small scale applications for sc small level applications and uh, that's it citations um thank you um